This big number has a strange property about it. It is a product of two primes. Can you find these primes? It is an understatement to call this number huge. There's no way we can factorize this manually. But surely a modern computer can do that, right? You see, a modern processor can run a billion operations per second. Let's take eight of them and it becomes eight billion operations in a second. Now, we need to pick an algorithm which can factorize a number into its prime factors. The most optimal one to this date is general number sieve. This algorithm has this weird time complexity which outperforms other algorithms when the input is sufficiently large. Our 225 digit input will scale down significantly in the number of operations it requires for factorization. These computations distributed amongst 8 cores gives us 35.4 million years in time. This is crazy, but you might wonder why do we even bother? Well, it turns out that such large numbers with this property forms the basis of a very important security algorithm. RSA, short for the names of researchers, is a cryptographic algorithm relying on the impracticality of factoring such numbers. The original paper was published in 1978 and was the first actual implementation of public key cryptography. In case you don't know, cryptography is a science of securing messages with an aim to maintain confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Public key cryptography does the task by a pair of keys, one publicly accessible and another privately hidden. Anyone can utilize the public key to encrypt a message, but only the corresponding private key can retrieve it back. This is indeed powerful because no one except the sender knows the private key so any intruder will never find out our original message. With that introduction, we are finally set to see the exact working of RSA. In RSA, the sender generates a pair of public and private keys, from which it distributes only the public key. Keys are essentially numbers which interact with our message by a mathematical function. For generating the keys in RSA, we require two primes. For now, let's take 13 and 17. We will compute their product and then the torsion function of that same product. Torsion function is simply the count of all natural numbers less than our product, which does not share a factor with the product. Fun fact, a prime number's torsion is always one less than it, as by definition any number other than the prime itself is co-prime to it. Another fact, the torsion of a number is equal to the product of torsion of its multiples, provided they are co-prime. There is a very elegant proof for this result, but I would like to skip it to focus on our encryption mechanism. For now, we will treat it as an axiom and use it for the key generation process. Using these properties, we can write the torsion of our product as a product of torsion of 13 and 17, which evaluates to 192. Now, you just have to choose a positive number E, which is less than 192 and is scope prime to our product. Let's take 5. We got our public key. It's the pair 5 and our product 221. For the private key, we need to find another number D, whose product with E leaves a residue of 1, if divided by a torsion 192. We call D multiplicative inverse of E modulo 192 and denote it as follows. Finding this seems a tedious task, but we do have an algorithm for it. Because I want to focus on RSA, I would skip its proof. For now, assume it's a black box, from where we get our DS77. We also got our private key, which is the pair 77,220. Let's test out an example to see RSA in action. Represent a message as a number. Here, we are substituting each letter with its position in alphabets. Now, we will calculate a number corresponding to each alphabet using our public key 5,221, which is essentially the residue of the fifth power of position when divided by the product 221. We got the encoded message. To get the original message back, we will do the same operation with private key this time. 
Each position will be raised to the power 77 and its residue with 221 will give back our original alphabet. You see, we can use the public pair to encrypt the message, but only the private pair can retrieve back our original message. Thus, any user intending to send a message securely simply needs to pick two primes, generate a key pair and share the public key. You might wonder how the math behind this works. Why should we get our message back using only a private key if it is encrypted by the public key? This comes down to an important theorem in number theory, which states that for a pair of coprime numbers a and n, the power of a to the quotient of n will give a residue of one when divided by n. I have attached a full mathematical proof in the description, which you can check out. For now, you have got a methodology which can help you set up an encryption scheme using two primes. You notice we expose our public key in the process which contains the product of primes. What if someone guesses it? If they do so, they can easily calculate the quotient of it and subsequently the private key. This is risky and can jeopardize the security of our algorithm. We need a way to handle this. Well, it's pretty easy. You make the primes very large. We have already seen how it's near impossible to predict the prime factors of a 225 digit number. In real RSA implementations, the product is even bigger and can have more than 600 digits. This 617 digit product has remained unfactored till date. We require values of p and q to get our quotient. The product is not sufficient. Because only sender has those values, it's not possible for any intruder to determine the private key. Now, having discussed the working of RSA, let's look at its real world application. Assume you want to buy some stuff from Amazon. You visit their website. Any information you share with Amazon can be intercepted by an intruder because all of you exist on the internet. For this, you and Amazon both should have a key which can encrypt or decrypt your messages so that only you two know about it. But how do you share the key? Here's when RSA plays the role. When you establish a connection with Amazon's server, you receive a certificate. These certificates are simply documents containing the public key of RSA. These certificates are validated by trusted authorities, which you can verify at your end. Now, your browser makes a random key and encrypts it using the public key of Amazon. The server receives your encrypted key, which it can retrieve back by its private key. Now, you and Amazon both have the same key for all of the information being communicated. One question you might have, why are we not using RSA to encrypt the messages directly? Why do we need the key? It's simple. Basically, RSA and other public key ciphers are computationally slow. To ensure a seamless real-time interaction, we need a key which does both encryption and decryption very quickly. Because we also need to share this key securely with Amazon, we take some overhead during the connection phase. We are finally at the end of our video. We have seen how simple and yet powerful RSA is. The whole idea hinges on the impossibility of factoring large numbers in finite time. I would urge you to read the original paper and if you're ambitious, check out the RSA 2048 challenge. Thank you so much for sticking with me till the end.